Growing up in church, I feel like I had a lot of access to a lot of spiritual leaders, um, especially going to private school and different things like that, and especially like women who were really um, strong in their faith. Um, I thought of a few specifically. Number one being my mom, um, because no matter what life threw at her, she was so strong spiritually. Every single morning I remember waking up for school and she would be at the dining room table with her Bible open, reading her Bible. Um, and even after being diagnosed with cancer and just having, you know, to still work full time and just all of those different things, she just never complained and just was always faithful and was always at church and was always in the word and all of those things. Um, my other two were from a while back. It was Jeanette Bronson and Sarah Dosio. Um, I feel like there was a part of my life where I was rebellious as a teenager and young adult um, and just not making great decisions and they were just always there to encourage me and you know make sure that I was where I was supposed to be and doing what I was supposed to do. With Sarah Dosio, I, um, right before my senior year in high school, I volunteered like basically every day in the church office and the school office. I mean, I guess they were kind of one and the same. Um, and she would basically pick me up every single day. At the time, I only lived like three minutes away when we were on DI and Ellis. And she would pick me up every single day and we'd go work together. I almost put air quotes around work, but I mean, we did work. <laughs> um, but we would work all day long just side by side doing music stuff and doing church stuff and doing school stuff like preparing for the school year. Um, she would take me to lunch and I just think there were moments in those days of just encouragement and just again making sure that I was doing what I was supposed to do especially going into my senior year in high school just kind of having conversations like what are you going to do and you know what does your life look like after you graduate high school and just being a listening ear for all of my teenage girl problems at 17. I was seven years old and we were attending Gateway Baptist Church and there was a Sunday um, we were attending with um, cousins of ours and I just remember there being a distinct moment where the pastor at the time talked about heaven and hell and truthfully when the invitation came I just was scared to go to hell um, and I think a lot of times like kids like that's kind of what brings them to Jesus is not necessarily like as an adult you have this knowledge of like you know you have a need for a savior different things like that but as a kid it's like well I don't want to go to hell that sounds really scary and so the pastor's wife her name was Mrs. Patterson um, took me and my cousins and a few other girls there was probably six or seven of us into the back room and led us to Christ I was thinking about this in the car right here too um, I think between my senior year of high school and 2012, I was, I don't want to even say like rebellious, but I was like fairly rebellious, just like not making great decisions. Um, and I think in like the summer of 2012 is when I finally was just like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep making these decisions. Like you're an adult. I didn't want to cry, Kenny, my goodness. Um, I think that was really the moment that I was like, okay, God, you can have it all. I think, um, I think Maddie said something in her video about having to have her own walk with Christ and it not just be um, necessarily a byproduct of her parents because obviously she's grown up in church, her dad's a pastor, different things like that. And I think for me, also growing up in church my entire life, I am very, very lucky um, that Christianity stems back so many generations from my dad's side, not my mom's side. Um, but from my dad's side, I mean, probably more than five or six generations, if not more, are Christians. Um, and so I think for me now, being almost 32, it's really important to me that now being older, I think um, growing up, like, especially when you grow up in church, you're there because your parents make you go. You don't necessarily always want to go, but you go because you want to. And I think graduating high school, getting married, being on my own, I think being able to continue to go to church and now raise my own kids in church, I think is really big um, for me personally and not necessarily like relying on 
my parents' faith. Um, I have basically no talent aside from singing, um, which I mean, some people would probably argue that, that like we're on the fence about that. Um, no, jokes aside, I've always really, really loved to sing since I was a little girl, so it's really special to me that I get to, um, see, now that I started crying, now everything's just freaking tears. Um, I think it's really special to me to get to lead people in worship every single week, and I don't take that for granted. Um, I hate when people give me compliments on singing because it just makes me really uncomfortable and I don't know how to respond, but, um, I feel like it's really, a really big part of my life is music, all genres of music. Um, and so being able to sing and just worship God that way is just really, really special to me, probably more so than somebody else who just comes to church on Sunday and sings. I just, I don't know. I'm really, really lucky to be able to do that.